of quality and packaging from Mother Dairy. Can we have a huge round of applause for the beautiful lady? <laughs> Ms. Aparna Tandon Jain, Lead Nutrition, NPD from Signutra. Can we have a huge round of applause for her? <laughs> Ms. Komal Arora, VP Quality Assurance and Operation BTW. Let's give her a huge round of applause for the lady. <laughs> Mr. Yogendra Kumar, Head of Packaging from My Vestige. <laughs> My Vestige Private Limited. Okay, with this, please put your hands together for Miss Neha Rambia, DGM Quality Assurance from Rebel Foods. <laughs> and last but not the least, our moderator, Dr. Naveen Danda, Director, JSBS Food Private Limited. Let's give him a huge round of applause to Dr. Naveen Dhanda. And this, uh, uh, like, stage is all yours. You can take your mic. Thank you so much, and I'll see you soon. Hello, 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 hello. Is it working? Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Sinex, for having us. And the panel you see in front of uh, in front of you is fully loaded with Nari Shakti. So you're going to have a very good session. And the, the topic that has been given to us is the. Uh, eco-friendly packaging and the future of eco-friendly packaging in India. Is it better now? Yeah, thank you. So just repeating the topic, eco-friendly packaging and how it is working in India and the future of it in India. To go there, I the world is in transition. Everyone wants to go greener, and packaging is one of the components as well. It can't be left behind. And in terms of use of packaging, it is growing and growing every year. And in the last three years, the world has changed, so has the mode of transportation. So packaging is one of the components when it comes to delivery of any product. And food, Packaging has taken a lot of lead in terms of how it is arriving at your doorstep. And every outlet is knocking at your doorstep and definitely when it comes to that kind of challenge, packaging is going to play a huge role how the food is going to be delivered at your, at your doorstep. Uh, I don't want to dwell much on it, but how, you know, to, to, to meet this demand, and, uh, you know, packaging is going to produce a lot of waste and that's a huge impact on environment. And in that regard, how we control it, it's like a balance, right? Uh, everyone wants to go greener. How fast we can go to greener packaging? Is it like very, like we can reach there quickly? But the answer is not that easy, right? It has to come from somewhere, the green, the green packaging I'm talking about. It has to come from environment to go back into the environment. 
that degree, you know, how we can going to control it, that is something that, you know, the panel is going to share their experience. Uh, they all come from food industry, they're handling food day, day to, on a day-to-day -day basis. And they're going to share their experience how this trend, which we call it eco-friendly packaging, how it is going to work for us in India and how quickly we can go there or is it something. But they're going to share their, their, their experience and I'm sure you're going to um, walk away with some takeaways from this panel, I'm sure about it. So the first speaker that going to share uh, her experience uh, in handling food packaging is Komal. And Komal is going to talk about the present scenario of packaging in India and why this eco-friendly packaging is important to us. So over to you, Komal. Very good morning to all of you. One of the first interaction a customer has with any product is through its packaging. So its packaging play a very vital role in FMCG industry. No matter how much we speak about the harmful effect of packaging, it is necessary for the transportation, storage, and the consumption of the food product. Yeah, definitely a big question mark is here, the packaging waste, which is a burning issue in the present scenario. The pollution and the toxicity that enter into the environment due to the side effect of the human activity, not only degrade the environment, but effect on the overall ecosystem. Approximately one third of the total waste generated is from the packaging material. Yeah, uh, it's, a, it's a real fact that our environment is under immense pressure due to the side effect of the human activity from the global warming to the plastic pollution. There are so many problems that need to be addressed. Now it's a time we choose better option for our health, environment, and the business. Eco-friendly packaging, from the name itself, it's clear, the environmental friendly, safe, and uh, good for our environment. That's why eco-friendly uh, pa uh, eco packaging are becoming a hot topic in the fight against environmental degradation. It is easy to recycle and safe for individual and the environment. It is made out of biodegradable recycling packaging material and it's non-toxic to environment and the living beings. Uh, many companies have started using eco-friendly packaging to pack their food products and uh, contributed greatly uh, to prevent our environment and the world life. Uh, BTW has also switched over from uh, plastic disposable to environment bio-based uh, packaging material in our retail chain business. And this packaging material is made from the baggers, the agri-waste byproduct. And thus converting this agriculture waste product into environmental friendly, we are not only reducing the air pollution, but also the carbon footprint, uh, minimize the carbon footprint on the planet. It, uh, good part is it's a bio, bio it's a refrigerated safe, microwave, uh, microwave safe, and 100% biodegradable. Thus by converting this agri waste uh, to this uh, environmental friendly, we are not making us a uh, better option over the plastic. <coughs> Did we know that every piece of plastic that was ever made is still on the earth and not even started biodegrading? The kadwa such is this, it will take more than 500 years to decompose depending upon their composition. Correct me if I'm wrong, the global plastic waste has doubled uh, the, double the production from uh, the beginning of the century to almost about 400 million metric ton per year. And the recycled plastic is less than 10% of the total plastic generated yearly. And unfortunately, the approximately 10 million ton of plastic is dumped in ocean every year worldwide. And roughly 40% of the ocean surface is covered with the plastic waste. The total amount of the plastic waste exceeds approximately 300 million metric ton with an annual increase.
and more eco-friendly will allow us to preserve the planet for the future. It is individual, every individual responsibility to ensure that whatever work they do does not harm the environment. Small, small changes in our daily life also contribute a lot. After all, Earth is our home and if we do not protect its resources, we might not have many more generations that could survive with the same ease and the convenience like ours. So becoming eco-friendly packaging will continue to be an important part of our collective mission to create cleaner and healthier world for ourselves and upcoming generation. That's it. I Thank hope you. and uh, come, uh, give a better uh, response to your question. Thank you, Komal. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. I mean, hearing you, it looks like it's a huge problem. We, we know that it's a huge problem. Yeah. And uh, how to get greener, that's something, you know, we are here for to discuss about it. Okay. Thank you. Now, the second, second thing in, in row is how this eco-friendly packaging uh, can be made in India. So, to talk about this, Neha is going to take over from here. Over to you, Neha. Hello. Um, it's working. Um, good morning. Namaste. Um, it's quite, uh, you know, it's an irony. मतलब हमारा देश जहाँ पे हमने शुरुआत ही खाने की अपने पत्तों से उनके थाल पे हमने शुरू की. We've reached to a situation जहाँ हम ये बात कर रहे हैं कि okay, plastic अब बहुत बड़ी problem हो जाएगी. तो अ कंट्री वेयर हम ही खाने में ऐसा खाना खाते हैं पत्तों के इसमें जहाँ से हमने शुरू किया है वेयर वी वी आर समबड़ी हु ईट्स इन अ प्लेट जो कॉपर है हम बहुत ज़्यादा अपनी संस्कृति को ध्यान में रखते हैं हाव एवर वी स्टिल लैंडेड इन सच सिचुएशन इट्स समथिंग टू बी थॉट ऑफ कि हम इसमें कैसे आ गए हाव एवर माई टॉपिक इज कि हम इससे बाहर कैसे आ सकते हैं हाउ हाउ कैन वी सॉल्व दिस प्रॉब्लम सो इन माई ओपिनियन फूड पैकेजिंग कैन बी इको फ्रेंडलियर इन इंडिया by moving it to non plastic that's one solution uh, a comprehensive market benchmarking analysis was conducted um, and the solutions that we thought of uh, were paper could be bagasse uh, could be cornstarch materials could be fruit pulp these are few options that we can have uh, parameters uh, like to have a transition from uh, the plastic to non plastic the parameters would be cost branding uh, sourcing microwave compatibility um and much more whatever the needs are that needs to be considered um then a paper based packaging can be prioritized for its cost effectiveness and eco friendliness such as if we are not cost efficient then i think it be, it's going to be a bigger problem um then the analysis data also suggested that we can currently replace up to 63% of our plastics into non plastics um and as a non plastic alternatives as i said um baga solutions can be a very great development in this round so that's end from my side thank you thank you neha thank you okay uh, eco friendly packaging you know is it not something like one time use uh, as long as we can recycle it to number of time that's also eco friendly packaging and it's called it's a versatile am i audible to everyone i don't know I, i'm okay thanks uh it's versatile mm, it's versatile and to talk about it how it can be recycled repurposed or it's a uh, how it can be made biodegradable so it can break down and merge with with environment so to talk about it uh, yogendra is with us and he is going to talk about this one over to you yogendra good morning namaskar namaste um uh all of us are mr komal and neha already told about that the uh, packaging is very very important role in our the economy as well as in our environment also and uh, nowadays the plastic is the very dangerous for us with respect to the for the human life also now that we will the focus on the eco friendly packaging how we can the recycle because it is a very useful for the um, human body as well as the food packaging also but it is very easy to recycle instead of the plastic material just like the petrochemical products 
the recycle packaging uh, we can say that we can the reuse also just like in the fiber drum box we can reuse in very easily paper we can convert into the uh, semi craft paper very easily because the plastic we will uh, convert the plastic into the semi craft or uh, on the, on the uh, sorry plastic and convert in the uh, it is very dangerous and everybody take the long term and the very costlier than the uh, eco friendly packaging so that uh, the eco friendly packaging uh, just like a, uh, we can use in the uh, in the second uh, semi craft paper board papers and uh, the glass uh, you can use the glass food also. the food uh, food industry in the glass and the packing just like uh, nowadays the uh, we are are also working on the uh, uh, toothpaste to tooth, oh, sorry toothpaste for the uh, biodegradable packaging um, that is a very suitable, but now stability is going on on the uh, on the that product. But still, we are not success with respect to the some uh, product uh, self life also. But eco friendly packaging, we can say. Um, uh, eco friendly packaging, we can say that reduce the carbon footprint, and uh, eco friendly packaging allows the more storage space, and it toxic and allergen free also. So these are the some seven factors uh, which help in the uh, convert the eco friendly to uh, in, in the recycling also reuse also sometimes the paper bags we use in the uh, we use in uh, home uh, homemade uh, carry bag also so that is the uh, very eco friendly packaging is suitable for the recycling the repurpose also thank you yogendra for your for your insight of this uh, topic. Uh, Himanshi is going to talk about the key trends, the current trends that we are following in India and how this is going to shape up uh, the future of eco-friendly packaging in India. So whether we're going to see more shift, and of course it's, it's going to be more shift, but how quickly and at what scale and Himanshi is going to talk about this particular topic. So Himanshi, over to you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, sustainability and eco-friendly has been one of the key topic of discussions in business nowadays. But when it's come to implement these sustainable solutions, biodegradable, compostable, or food grade PCR recyclate in our daily dairy packaging, we have barriers like high cost, food safety issues and the limited availability of this sustainable solution. So uh, though there are certainly challenges with this uh, sustainable solution for brands to deliver now, there are also plenty of opportunities to work for. For us in Mother Dairy, we are not entirely working on eco-friendly initiatives like biodegradable or compostable packaging. But with the right focus and innovation capabilities, we are working on several multiple initiatives that help us to deliver or achieve uh, cumulative better results. And to uh, share such approaches, the most eco-friendly approach towards that is how about 100% plastic free or no plastic into the system. And, 90 and in our portfolio, 15% of our uh, packaging, we are not using packaging. An example to that is our token milk. And through that approach, we are saving 900 metric ton of plastics coming into the environment every year. Followed by reductions in the plastics and paper usage. With the advancements in the material sciences and new technology, we can redesign, reshape, re-innovate our material of constructions. And with this strategy, it, will, it is a clearly win-win for your business as well as environment because it leads to cost optimization and helps us to achieve the green targets. And with the implementation of such game-changer projects in our system, we have been able to reduce 500 metric ton of plastic, 500 metric ton of paper, and 900 metric ton of carbon emissions from our system. As we know that plastic is not going to suddenly disappear from our ecosystem because of its unique useful properties. So 
to reduce the effects and to, for the betterment of the environment, we should emphasize on better recyclable structures and we should design for reuse. And in our portfolio, 90% of the packaging is 100% recyclable and we ensure that all our future innovations should be in this approach. Now, when we say uh, design for reuse, it helps us to uh, longer the packaging life and it prevents packaging material, plastic specifically, from entering into the waste stream directly. One such classic example is crates. And that is the most uh, cost-effective approach when we compare it to single-use other items in your longer run. And so with all these approaches which I discussed and shared, I would like to conclude that making a shift towards sustainable solution is not simple and uh, straightforward, but one can start with these small changes that can still make a bigger difference to our environment. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Manchu. Thank you so much. Yeah, that was good. Uh, now, emerging trends in biodegradable packaging. What are the challenges? This is Aparna is going to take over from here and tell us what's happening. And yeah, we are pleased. Over to you, Aparna. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, very good morning, everyone. Uh, so here, uh, all my panel members already discussed about uh, the eco-friendly packaging or what do we also say it as sustainable packaging or your uh, biodegradable packaging. So before starting with the emerging trends, I would just like to touch upon what do we mean by biodegradable packaging is something which is made from uh, materials which can decompose by the action of microorganisms, whether it is your bacteria, fungi, etc. And during the process of decomposition, uh, nothing is uh, uh, creating a problem for the environment. And the whole process is getting completed within a one-year cycle. So that is what we meant by biodegradable and what type of materials being used for making these kinds of packaging, uh, like your corn, uh, all your uh, food items, basically plant-based materials, cellulose, maize, these are the items which are used for making these biodegradable packaging. And when it comes to packaging uh, for the food industry, because food is something which we all consume every day, right? During our whole day cycle, we are consuming something or the other. And how that food is being packaged, one is your primary packaging, which is in direct contact with your food. And the other one is the secondary packaging, which is not in direct contact with the food, but it, it is something which is, uh, giving knowledge to the consumer and it is also for uh, safe uh, uh, transportation of the food item so that the food doesn't get spoiled. So we uh, want to uh, adopt biodegradable uh, packaging for both primary as well as the secondary packaging. Now coming to the emerging trends, uh, so now uh, Everyone is talking about sustainability, whether it, uh, it is for the food items, food ingredients, whatever we are using. And it is also towards the packaging because we do not want to emit more of uh, uh, carbon footprints uh, and we do not want to create more of the waste materials, right? So uh, nowadays, uh, plant-based plastics is being used, uh, the biodegradable plastics uh, or the biodegradable kind of packaging is being used. Uh, you will see uh, in the older times, uh, we used to get all our spices and other things in all those plastic packets. Now this, the shift is coming. Now it is being packed in paper. Government is also uh, doing a lot of efforts. They have stopped uh, the use of uh, plastic, say for example, the straws, or even the earbuds, now you will see the juices coming with the paper straw, right? Uh, the emerging trends would be uh, more advanced, like uh, we have active packaging. The active packaging is helping in uh, making the food more safer. They have those sensors which either take out the moisture from the food ingredients or they take out the uh, excess of your moisture 
from the head space, which is available in the packaging, which ensures a better shelf life for the food product. So this is something which is happening. Then there is intelligent uh, packaging which is happening, which is coming with the sensors on the outer pack, which also uh, gives the consumer uh, an idea about how the food has traveled, about the whole uh, uh, food chain from the farm to the folk to the plate, how the food has been traveled, is it safe or not. So about the food safety also, the consumer is getting awareness through this intelligent packaging. So these are some of the emerging trends I would uh, like to cover in my topic. Uh, if there's anything else anyone would like to add, we can definitely add to that. No. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Aparna. Thank you so much. Sorry for it. Yeah. Uh, coming back to this topic, yeah, of course, uh, uh, in terms of uh, waste generation, we have seen shift. You know, when I was studying, uh, we would go to tea, tea outlet. The tea outlet was totally green. They would recycle or reuse their cups, their glasses, and they would hold their snacks into glass jars. But now look at all these tea outlets and look at the amount of waste that is generated. So I look at this small picture and that gives me a sort of a, a picture of how much waste we are generating and, uh, to, and, and its impact on environment and going greener, you know, becoming eco-friendly with environment is the, is the demand of the time. But how quickly we can do that and what sort of speed, what sort of speed you know, we can propel into 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 the, into this movement. I don't know. I mean, that's what you know we have been discussing over the last 20, 25 minutes. Uh, coming back to this sort of topic, uh, uh, do any one of you can add here? You know, when you are you deal with packaging and food, uh, here comes sort of challenges designed to minimize to minimize uh, waste and at the same time give the maximum protection to the food, uh, convenience for the courier person and, uh, you know, marking the brand on, the, on, on, on packaging. So, you know, when you are packaging, you want to achieve all out of it. At the same time, you want to be, I mean, becoming environment friendly is the last thing on a on manufacturers list, right? And how to, uh, how to encourage them to go eco-friendly. Of course, government comes out and, you know, with some sort of guidelines, there's, there's, there's nothing that you must do that unless it is, it is to do with the health of the consumer, okay? So, I mean, what sort of trend do you see when you interact with your other, uh, you know, food manufacturers or packaging manufacturers, are they serious about it? How serious are they? Like, do, do you talk on a day-to-day -day basis with your, this sort of things, uh, how to become eco-friendly uh, when it comes to packaging, how to manufacture eco-friendly packaging? So how serious are they? Like, I just, can any one of you pick up, pick up mic and talk about it? Um, so one very uh, common challenge that yeah. we all face, so starting from the challenges, yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, average cost impact from going to non-plastic uh, alternatives is currently high by 30 to 40 percent. So, that's one very big challenge. So, in case if you have to solve these problems and address um, the packaging industry as a whole, we all need to actually have more investments uh, to first collaboratively um, develop the solution which will also require some time. So, that's one big problem. Um, the another alternative for pet bottles is, I think, as a whole, a bigger area of opportunities. I, I, so, Dribel uh, Foods, currently, we are trying to have a transition from plastic to non-plastic. We are aiming to have it an entire thing by 2030. Um, we are working on this project for a while. However, so, whatever I'm talking is from the experiences that we've been facing from a from couple of months that we are working on this project. We are quite serious on this. However, the market challenges persistently, particularly, specifically with leak proofing and with microwave use. 
these are the two biggest another challenges that we f we face while we want to have a transition from plastic to non plastic um the last is um, again so the material choices containers eliminating of tape usage in the final product will we seal the products that is another um so yeah, non plastic projects demands a lot of solutions they are plastic free while considering usability and cost effectiveness these are the two areas where we have bigger area of opportunity that needs to be looked upon as a whole as a packaging industry well thank you for this uh, uh, you, your company is committed when it comes to that's that's how i'm i'm going no thank you uh, two hour of uh, two o two of our panel <coughs> members and they have put their apology they couldn't turn up they had some emergency at their place and uh, so we had to run this show with our smaller size panel and uh, any question, any q you know questions that you know th they are welcome we have time we have time yes can you be just specific with your question and to who you want to question to So good morning, all of you. I'm Dr. Anand Tripathi from Uflex Limited. Uh, sir, I feel a little disappointed when you exclude plastic from eco-friendly packaging. First of all, secondly, uh, plastics. To my sense, uh, you may correct me. To my sense, plastic is not a you know threat. It's an opportunity. When it when I say it's an opportunity. i would say all plastics are recyclable multiple times right we as an uflex have established some setups like we have a you know good setup at noida at jammu also we can recycle up to 1200 metric ton a month plastic waste into the recycled contents so we have all three systems solutions are available we are ready to invest in technology also but the challenge is that two things as you mentioned Uh, you know the your current uh, eco friendly packaging is recyclable question number 1 is that recyclable substrate of yours is approved by fsi because fsi is something which always comes into the picture they say the recycled content should not come into touch with the direct food contact we also you know we also discuss with those authorities who are available there but they simply deny they are proposing a draft which should come by december end and in that they may mention something about the direct contact of recycled contents so recycling challenge in existing paper based or non paper based plastic based or non plastic based both are there so what do you see uh, as an authority of ssi and between you know uh, pwm where is the synchronization gap which is you know creating such kind of questions among the audiences like us and the people who are using plastics as well so again i am re reinstating this subject plastic is an opportunity it's not a threat thank you okay yeah you are right sir plastic is an opportunity as economically for economically and the cost saving also but the recyclable packaging we can use the uh, for a primary secondary tertiary so we can divide the recycled packaging in the primary uh, we can use it as per the fssi primary packaging is very good for the food industry just like a Uh, for con control the contamination but the recycled packaging we can the secondary packaging and tertiary packaging also so that the, it is uh, useful for the to so save the money and the some the green houses gases also is it better one or do you want some more light on it uh, himanshi wh what's your experience uh, i think you mother mother dairy yeah the yeah. yeah. so i will definitely agree to your point as in dairy companies i will believe 95 to 98% of the packaging is plastics and due to the unique useful properties and due to the developments in the new technology they are helping us to actually reduce the food wastage so it's like antimicrobials or the silver ions in our paneer packaging film is helping us to extend the keeping quality of our paneer in the market similarly there are other advances in the barrier layers of the films which has helped us to extend our flavored milk that is uh, extended shelf life flavored milk from 28 days to 90 days which is actually possible with the developments in the plastics 
So if we want to switch to the paper-based pouches or to other alternatives, are uh, the guys who are sitting here willing to pay that two rupees or a four rupees ex uh, extra packaging cost and also giving up the inconvenience of those things because that won't be really convenient for you to have like on the go products or other things. So there are many useful properties but we need to think of certain ways uh, like how to recycle it better. So for that one has to at least work for their 100% extended producer responsibilities and uh, they should design for better recyclates so that could be it will be easier in the systems so uh, those type of works we should think of rather than uh, switching from uh, directly from plastics to paper or other things that will only um, put the extra cost to the today's consumer basically uh, i would also like to add uh, when it comes to milk uh, like we do have tetra pack milk. I know it's uh, the eco-friendly is going to cost us more. It's coming in the uh, tetra packaging. Again, the cost is going to be on a higher side. So I think there the government needs to make some uh, leverages for the food manufacturer who are adopting the eco-friendly or the biodegradable packaging. They should give them some, uh, you can say, subsidies or so that they can uh, give the uh, cost to the consumer on a lower price so that it is affordable for a normal consumer you are very right the consumer is not going to pay 2 rupees more but again you have examples like doodwala who is selling uh, milk in uh, glass bottles not in the uh, plastic packaging so nowadays uh, the uh, new uh, ventures or the new uh, startups who are coming up, I think they are more responsible and they are adopting those uh, sustainable packaging, how we can uh, reduce the use of uh, plastic, which is going to be a burden in future. It can be recycled, but how many times can you recycle a plastic for reuse? purposes. Plastic can be recycled n number of times without changing its IV at multiple times. That is the best part of plastic, right? Secondly, uh, you, mem Aparna mem no, right? yeah. you mentioned that uh, the degradation target should be one year. Uh, I'm sorry, I have not come across any of the law as of now, which states that one year ke andar it should degrade. Secondly, uh, being Uflex and being responsible partners into the packaging and consumers too as well, we have already established two mechanisms which can ensure the degradation at a certain content, right? We have been certified by NORC and UK also and we are partnering with CPET as well. We have developed some design which is ensuring recyclability and a degradation within a frame of 30% in one year. So, you know, works are going on. As I mentioned, plastic is not a challenge, it's an opportunity. We all must cater that opportunity and we have to work accordingly. See, paper also have its own challenges, you know, the supply chain and repellability. Uh, most, most important is life cycle analysis of paper, which, which takes lot of energy. And consuming lot of energy, again, enhance lot of, you know, usage of, in fact, emission of CO2. It creates, uh, you know, global greenhouses as well. So, what I, I want to say that uh, we, me and you must collaborate to each other and let us find out the better way that, right? Paper is definitely, we are using paper also, we are using plastic also. But degradation is something which is yet to be established in how much time it should get degraded. So studies are going on. If you have some clauses, any you know guidelines, reference, kindly provide to me so that we can also you know participate into that uh, studies. Yeah. And it's not just paper. So uh, when we talk about biodegradable packaging, it is uh, cellulose also. It is cornstarch also. It is seaweed also, and uh, I mean different materials are being used. It is not just the paper which is the alternative. I'm, yeah, so paper again, it is dependent on uh, you, are, you have to cut more trees and you're dependent on the wood to get that paper. So a lot of new areas are coming in uh, to uh, provide the biodegradable packaging solutions. Uh, I would like to add, uh, I would like to add just one point. While there are solutions with the startups and other things, uh, where milk is a daily nutrition or a necessity for a masses, uh, plastic is mandatory because it can provide that affordable and scalable solution for the masses. So though th we are also working on multiple other alternatives, but we have to take care of that uh, cost effective and scalable solutions when we comes to feed the masses for their nutrition requirements.
Thank you. In fact, I have come across one group in Mumbai who was asking the uh, consumers that what happens to that uh, when you are opening the plastic uh, milk and when you are making that small cut, where is that plastic is going? When is that going to be recycled? So packaging industry or even the milk industry should come up with solutions wherein they can have some something for the consumer which is going to uh, avoid that even the small piece of plastic going haywire. Um, I can answer to that one from dairy packaging. Like there are now education being provided to the consumer by printing through the dots and providing the cut signs that till that 80% or 60% of the area you have to cut and make it as a hinge to the rest of the pouch so that it should not get uh, discarded as a small piece and it should remain with the pouch and it should went to the recycling stream like the rest of the pouch is going. Yeah. Are you, are you in plastic making packaging or yes, yeah. no no that's all right so is it are are we in align yeah are we in alignment now or not we are in alignment so that that's good so any can we go to the second next question yeah good morning first of all thank you very much for this wonderful discussion my name is ravi i'm the managing director of rovema india and i'm on the equipment side and i've been working for about 40 years on the packaging machinery, both in pharma, food, and chemical side. I think the discussion has focused too much on materials. And I just want to take a minute to understand, for all of us to understand how we got here. All the while, if you look at India, say 30, 40 years when I was a kid, we n never used packaging. We went to a shop with a thela, we went uh, to mother dairy, I think, was the first yes, innovative yes. thing. We had. My, we used to call this button milk. You know, we used to buy a button. So we, there we've come to this huge consumption of plastics. What is the reason? And driver is fit. Primary driver is to maximize profit. Now, if dairy, your milk has limited shelf life, so you can, your mark kilometers from but if you have a packaging like Tetra Pak, you can make milk, pack milk in Delhi, let it push. They want. So this profit motive, motive has pushed us to use of these plastics. Today we are talking, thankfully, about the environment. Even that is because of our selfish motive that if children will be affected, so we need to do something. So what, are, what is it that we need to do? First is, I think, I was in a meeting with a, a leading uh, uh, company, and he called me and said, Ravi, we would like, we are in pouch packing. So he said, Ravi, we would like to pack this product, and I don't want to spend more than one rupee on the package. Can you help us? So I turned around and said, why one rupee? I'll make it zero. So he said, how can you make it zero? I said, set up a retailing center like Mother Dairy and let people go and get collect your product. You don't have to actually package it. And he was looking for one rupee and I gave him zero and he didn't take my advice because So that's the first thing that we need is no packaging could be the first solution we could look at. The second thing on which we are working a lot is to reduce the amount of packaging material you're using. So packing a kilo of some product grams of plastic to reduce the package size. Um, and we are doing the The third thing, very important thing, is alternative materials, which is what I think this group has been talking about. Now, there are two major barriers to this. This was one is cost, but the second very important thing is you have accumulated so much of capital equipment, machinery, and things like that that work on a particular type of packaging material come across and say I move over to a different type of material, what do you do? You have to start investing. Let's say Matariri says from tomorrow we pack only a bottle, glass bottle. We have thousands of machines that pack in pouches, thousands of machines that were tetra pack. That's another barrier. The last barrier is in FMCG company market, 
any package has to do three things. It has to be cost effective. Second, it has to have the technical requirements to provide the shelf life the product is looking for. And last but not the least, it's the POP value. When you go to the supermarket at the point of purchase, the package has to sell itself. Right? So unless and until an alternative comes which meets these three this thing, the journey is not going to be easy. And therefore, and Uh, it will take a few years, but we, need, we all need to work on multiple dimensions, not just materials. That's my limited point. I have something to add on. All right, you go first. <laughs> <laughs> so one thing, sir, uh, with the context that you've just shared, I get it, in previous ages, when you were a child, when I was a child, my mother used to go and she used to buy a milk in that patila. She used to go. We used to go to restaurants. However, even now in this age and specifically, and I'm being very precise about this, in pandemic, post-pandemic, um, where we weren't allowed to move outside. And now the age is where I think both male, female, everybody, probably they keep, they actually work. In this era and in this age currently, where we really want a very easy access to everything, right where I am sitting. I want to sit here and I want to have an order placed at my house. I want to sit here and I want to have an on-the-go thing while I'll go. Or um, I am sitting here and I have a meeting in next and I'm like, Achha, khana jayega. by the time I come back and I'll have it. This In this era, in this time where we are moving, um, no packaging is something, yes, we can think of ki is pe kaise jaya ja sakta hai. But at the moment, current, present situation, where we are looking into these problems, ki is pe kaise jayenge, um, one thing we all have to understand ki, yes, packaging is still going to be a requirement as of now, uh, jahan hum currently is model mein function kar rahi hai. With what sir also said ki plastic is an opportunity, has also said ki shelf life bada sakta hai. Currently, while I also said it's a 63% possibility of moving, we never said it was 100. We can still make a difference out of moving, keeping forward currently at the stage. Yes, there are going to be barriers, but small changes are always going to help us making and move the shift in the entire scenario. Moving our current flywheel or moving our current business that we are moving, like I think ye karna possible hai. Challenges are we all have to start overcoming up. But yes, we have to also start looking into the current new age people. How are they moving in their businesses, in their meetings? Usme kaise chal raha hai? We have to also start looking into that also. So in that fashion. So yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, uh, I also want to add something in this. So uh, that's what like as I was saying, like we need to do introspection here. I mean, we have to be analytical. Uh, uh, as you were mentioning, like that small part where it is going, I mean, you know, animals, they are eating it. Then we are having milk, which is coming from animals again. And then, the, then that uh, documentary, uh, last, uh, lastly I've seen on Discovery, where, you know, it was shown that uh, in my last uh, uh, summit, I have discussed about this in, uh, in Brenalytics. So, I, I, I mean, uh, plastic is dumped, then it is eaten by these uh, sardines, then tuna fish is eating it, and then finally human. And then it is coming in blood and then in the fetus. So, how to extract plastic from there, that is again a, another question. Because every one of us is having it within us. So, that also, uh, so we need to, uh, 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 you know, have a system where, you know, we are educating, educational material, should be created in a way where, you know, and it should be disseminated in that way where, you know, people are getting uh, uh, hold of it and uh, uh, and they, they are introspecting and uh, then they can change themselves accordingly. Thank you very much. No, that, that's all right. I think it's a waste management issue what you are talking about and how to, you know, get this plastic back to the manufacturer that's the country's setup. So in Western countries, they don't have that kind of issue what you are having. And I don't know whether you read newspaper. It was in the newspaper day before yesterday. There's an 
Indian guy, very young and working in US, uh, one of the unis uh, US universities. So he's working on a model and they're going to build up a ship and ship is going to create what you're saying about um, salmon or yes. tuna or something like that. Uh, yes. Did you read it? Did you read it? Yes. So what they're going to do is that that ship would have uh, some kind of technology and is going to create a whirlpool in the water and it is going to suck up the waste, plastic waste. How successful the model is going to be, we don't know yet, but someone is working. So opportunities uh, are there. So as the solutions, you know, people work towards it. Right. I know what you're talking about, but, uh, and, uh, and your question, you know, about uh, a lot of investment, a lot of machinery already there. So manufacturers are reluctant to change, you know, whatever they have to become eco-friendly. But it works in cars, for cars, in auto, you know, in auto industry. They set up a date, okay, you have to go and reduce, to reduce pollution, you have to shift your engine to X, Y, Z, whatever it is. So it works for auto industry, so why it can't work for food industry? You set up a date, give 10 years down the turn line, this is what we are looking at. And by that time, machine also, machines also have shelf life. So after five years, six years, they need to replace it. So and is that something, you know, food for thought? I don't know. So now, thank you, thank you, for being patient with us. So uh, we are here. We are concluding our session. So we are within 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 given time. Sinex. So thank you for having us, and thank you, thank you, everyone. All right. Check check. Thank you so much to all the panel members for this wonderful discussion. And uh, to fel felicitate all the panel members, I would like to call, please put your hands together for Mr. Satya Priya Sharma, General Manager Sales from Domino. Can we have a huge round of applause for him? For the felicitation, I would like to call firstly, please put your hands together for Ms. Himanshi Khaneja. Please put your hands together for Ms. Aparna Tandan Jain. Let's give her a huge round of applause, everyone. Thank you. Please put your hands together for Miss Komal Arora. After this, we have a gentleman over here, Mr. Yogendra Kumar. Let's give him a huge round of applause. Now we have a lady, a beautiful lady, Miss Neha Rambia. Last but not the least, our moderator, Dr. Naveen Danda. Let's give him a huge round of applause to our moderator. 